Imagine you have a problem where you need to compute a crazy amount of numbers. Like you have a crazy large data set and you just want to chug through it. Right? But you, usually if you try to chug through that data set, maybe you wrote a program in C++ to did that. The resource that your computer would have to solve that problem is just kind of the CPU and the memory of what's, what's local to it, right? And so what the Flux Capacitor does is it takes that to kind of the network level, and instead of uh, your computer telling you what's available to you within your box, it says what's available to you on your local network. So we have a bunch of, down here we have a bunch of computers actually running with like big powerful graphics cards. We have, we have a bunch of computers set, set up there with all connected to, to this computer with Flux Capacitor. And when this computer asks, what kind of resources do I have to do all this computation, uh, all those computers respond with their graphics chips as well. And so here's a little, uh, a little demo. We used the, the Black-Scholes option pricing computation to benchmark our, our software. And 40 million option prices computed on this machine is the same time as 80 billion stock option prices computed using one of those machines and this. All right, so um, basically what we have here, uh, it's a new way to uh, detect bacteria and other biological compounds in things like drinking water, blood, what have you. Um, what we're trying to do is get our nanoparticles to um, selectively bind to um, bacteria that we want and basically generate what's called a fingerprint. Um, which is a unique like molecular signature for each species of bacteria we're trying to identify. Uh, if you get a library of a whole bunch of different bacteria and see what kind of fingerprint they generate for a bunch of different nanoparticles, you can get basically uh, a nice unique signature for each one. And then when you test unknown samples, you can compare the readings you get from those uh, samples and compare them to the uh, known library. Then you can diagnose or assess basically like what's in your drinking water, what's in your blood, and come up with a great new way to discover things. So the way it works is that uh, golden nanoparticles quench fluorescence. So when uh, they're in the presence of a, a biological entity, um, the fluorophore will sometimes preferentially bind to that bacteria or protein or whatever it is. Um, creating a fluorescent signal. Uh, since this fluorescent signal will be different for different biological entities, that's what gives you that actual fingerprint. Uh, one thing that the School of Optometry at the University of Waterloo has found is that it's very hard to teach this process to the students. And this is also something that they, they must master before they graduate. Essentially, every optometrist will have to do this during uh, when they perform eye exams to their patients. So what some of the problems they see is that because only one person gets to see through the people of the retina scope, as a student, it's really hard to describe what they're seeing to the professors. And on the other hand, as a professor, it's really hard for them to try to understand what, how, how they're using this and what they're actually seeing. So we have been working with uh, two professors at the School of Autometry here at Waterloo to uh, build a, a retinoscopy learning tool, which consists of a a 3D simulation, a, a desktop application where you can use where you can use a Wiimote to uh, to practice retinoscopy using the simulator. And we also have a learning tool built around this for professors to track uh, the students' progress and also students to track their own progress and to pretty much enhance this whole learning experience. Regular aluminum is hydrophilic, which means it's a water-liking surface. And this means that water, when it gets onto aluminum, will tend to spread out in order to maximize its contact with the surface. When we add our coating system to it, now this has an effect where it causes the water to form more as a, of a drop-like shape in order to minimize its contact with the surface. So if we put a water drop down on these first three ones, you can see that the water spreads out quite a bit and contacts a lot of the area. And in addition, if I put these on an angle, it's hard to get them to come off. But if we put that drop onto our coated surface, you can see that these drops roll off very quickly. 